Hey there everyone, my name is Luke and welcome to my channel. Today, this video is going to be aimed at those of you out there who use Pixinsight and indeed are comparing gifts. A little while ago, a subscriber got in contact with an offer of help and it wasn't just for me, it was for you too. Now the guy's name is Bill Blanchon and he's a very talented chap indeed, let me just tell you that and I'm happy to say that he's also a friend of mine. Now Bill's working currently on some really incredible pixel math for star reduction methods and I'm up to bring you a separate video on that soon. But today's video is actually going to be all about colour masks. Now Bill took an existing script to do with colour masking and basically added his own twist to it and he also built an accompanying tool that runs alongside it. This is used to blur those masks and make them in many cases much more usable and you've got full control over these tools as I'm going to hopefully show you in just a moment over on the video. Now colour masking in particular is one of those things that can make or break your processing. Uh, indeed I didn't really use it much before instead I was just relying on making range masks and trying to target colours individually using the uh, colour saturation tool in Pixinsight and honestly the reason I didn't use colour masks is because they're a little bit of a faff to get right. Now, Bill's tools have all been split up individually and the two work incredibly well as I'm hopefully going to demonstrate for you in just a moment. And not just on images that you're currently processing but also things that I've previously processed. I've tested it on a lot of stuff and it's always just blanket improvements right across the board. Now, I love using these tools and I'm almost certain that you will too if you give them a go. I'm going to be making them available for download via my Google Drive. It should be safe and secure for everybody involved. And basically, I'm going to talk you through how to install them and the basic usage. And we're going to get straight to that in just a moment. So uh, without any further delay, let's get to it. All right, so I'm going to take you through hopefully what I think is the easiest way to get all these installed into Pixinsight. So what you basically want to do is open up Pixinsight to begin with, right click, process icons and load all your current process icons. If you're a user of these things like I am, you're probably going to have a bunch of those waiting already. Now, they're already open and waiting and I'm going to leave Pixinsight open in the background. Once you've clicked the link in the video description, it'll take you to a folder like this, Pixinsight Tools, and where you'll see this tool here, colormasks.xpsm. So I'm going to right click that, hit download. It's just going to download those real quick for you. It's only about 15 kilobytes. And if you just left click this once, you should notice that they all open up inside Pixinsight. So I'm going to take those, move them somewhere appropriate, select all of the tools that I like to use regularly, right click process icons and save process icons now if i just hit that and save over my previous one that means that every time i open Pixinsight in the future now i'm going to be able to just go get all these tools back just by hitting load process icons and open all right then so hopefully as you can see here on the screen i've got a bunch of my previous master images if you like once i've uh, finished them i save them out and generally leave them well alone as a jpeg but i've opened a selection of them here now in pixinsight just to use these color masks on and hopefully take you through how to knock these images up just another notch or two in most cases so uh, first of all i'm going to work on this m51 image right here so uh, it's already a nice image i'm willing to say that even myself but i think if i add some more blue to these spiral arms it'd bring things up a touch now as you can see we've got all these color masks open right here so i'm going to click blue mask just double click it simply drag it and drop it onto the image as you can see it's uh, just made as a fresh blue mask there now you can see this mask is a little bit craggy in appearance so I'm gonna open Bill's mask blur tool up now so if you can just drag and drop it you're gonna get a blur straight away multiple iterations will give you a stronger effect and you can also change this Sigma value so as he's put here as a small description increase the sigma value to add more blur so if i'd have just typed 30 in there in the first place i wouldn't have had to apply it twice but all the same i'm just going to drop that blue mask now on this image open up curves and a real-time preview and now basically i wanted to work on that blue so that's what i'm going to do so i'm going to hit the blue and bring it up hopefully you can see that's really brought those blues uh, up just a nice notch now I do like that appearance. I'm going to go ahead and hit that. 
Now if I remove that mask, you don't have to do this, but just for the sake of uh, analyzing the image to see what I want to change next, I think I'm gonna. Looks like these magenta -y, uh kind of reddish regions could do it, bring it up a little bit, those HA regions. So I'm gonna open red mask this time. Just drag and drop it onto the image. And in a moment, I'll get rid of that old blue mask. All right, so you have got that there. Again, gonna open up mask blur. I think one, maybe two applications. Yeah, two is gonna be fine. Drag and drop it onto the image. And again, open that real time preview. So it was the red that I want to boost. So I'm indeed gonna boost just that alone. So if I bring that up a little, I could even check in RGB and K and see if I want to boost its overall luminosity some or drag it down even. I think in this case, I'm just going to leave it with that small boost. It's brought up these regions really rather nicely. And maybe a touch of saturation there as well. I wouldn't go amiss. So it looks like I'm being quite aggressive on these curves, but if you'll notice, there's actually no noise being added to this image. They're uh, really quite a gentle tool to use overall. Now, that's took that up really nicely. I think maybe these yellowish regions, just for the sake of showing you, I think they're actually fine, but I'm going to play around with them anyway. Uh, it gives me opportunity to use the yellow mask. Drag and drop that. All right, so you can see it's picked out all the yellow regions, but again, it needs a little bit of uh, convolution. So mask blur, here we go. I'm going to change it this time, and I think we'll import 45. So we're going to get a nice big blur straight away. See, it's got rid of most of those stars, and we've still got the regions that we've wanted. Drag and drop once more. Open this, and I think if I take a look at these channels and just have a little play, so... Uh, Whereas if we remove some green, add some green, changes things, uh, maybe take away a little bit of that red in those to make it go a bit of a sandier colour. I think I'd, I'd rather leave it as it was, but this is just for the sake of showing you this tool. But basically, uh, that took, what, two minutes or so? And we've got an immediately improved image, I like to think. All right, so we've closed M51 down now. I've just got it down in the corner over there, and I've opened up an image of the California Nebula from the Red Cat. I've not shown this on the YouTube channel or anything uh, just yet, I don't think. So uh, I'm going to do that now for just a moment and show you how I can take this image up just another notch as well. So this front edge of the Nebula, where it's kind of a, a kind of a burnt orange color, I want to make that a little bit more red. So I'm going to take the red mask, drag and drop. So as you can see, it's got very sharp edges picked out that region really well. So uh, I'll change this to about 45 Sigma. You don't have to do this. You could just keep dragging and dropping and get the uh, amount of blur that you want just with repeated iterations. But there, sure enough, that seems to be done very nicely. You can open that preview tool. And since I wanted to boost the red, I'm going to select the red and bring it up a notch. Now that looks pretty cool. As you can see, there's a big change already if the, you don't have to just work on the channel that you select by the way so let's say just for the sake of showing you this um, if I add some blue to this for example we should get a purplish color and if we go all the way we're probably getting kind of a, a hot pink almost and the interesting thing about this is like I mentioned before it's doing all this color change but there's no noise being added to the image like you'd usually get from uh, a saturation adjustment to change these uh, to wherever you wanted them but this is instead making the colors totally plastic it seems and they're happy to accept just about any manipulation so uh, let's get rid of that there because I was wanting to work on red alone so uh, I'll boost that up and apply and now I think maybe that blue region could use a little bit more of a boost so uh, let's remove that mask Close down my old red one. You should always make a new mask with this tool, I think, once you've uh, made adjustment, let it make a fresh mask with the new data. So uh, I want a blue mask this time. So I'll double click it, drag and drop it. Hopefully you can see just how simple and fast this is by this point. I'll just make a small adjustment to this one. Uh, as you can see, it's selected all that blue for me really nicely. I'm gonna make maybe that same sort of uh, Sigma change. 
it's nicely blurred out drag and drop and open that preview again so uh, it was the blue I wanted to work on so I'm going to bring that up a notch hopefully you can see that that's really getting uh, really intense colours now it's probably a little bit overbaked for most people's tastes but uh, I think it's eye catching and indeed again just to demonstrate we do have only blue selected but that's not to say that we can't add other colours and get different effects if you wanted a total rainbow on this California you could absolutely do that using these tools uh, it's very easy so if I just uh, open a little closer preview on this it looks to me like there's an ever so slight purple tinge to this so if I drag down whoops if I drag down the red uh, you can hopefully see it starts to go uh, a nice cool blue colour rather than this purpley um, random colour that it was. So that's where it was before and that's after adjustment and hopefully you can see there's absolutely no noise added. It's like magic almost. Uh, so I'm happy with that adjustment. I think maybe I could change this yellow somewhat if I wanted to but really for the sake of it I think you get the idea at this point of how this uh, works. I'm gonna close. I don't mean to do that, excuse my misclicking. I'm in a bit of a rush here. So if I uh, close down now, hopefully you can see maybe this one here. This one uh, is a Melot 15 image and you should be familiar with this if you've watched some of my previous videos. It's a nice image again, but I think looking back now, I got the colour balance a little bit wacky. This uh, background looks almost muddy brown and the foreground kind of blue glow isn't really blue it's a little bit purple so uh, first of all I'm gonna work on that blue so I'll take a blue mask drag and drop hopefully this isn't too uh, boring to watch but I think it is quite an effective dem demonstration of just how you can take an image that's kind of previously finished you don't have to use it on finished images of course uh, you are supposed to use it really when you're in the middle of your processing but uh, I think this is a good demonstration all the same so I'm gonna get a nice effective blur on this get rid of some of those hard edge uh, lines okay I'm happy with that that should be a nice natural transition open up the curves tool set off that preview and now we know that it's a little bit purple so I'm just gonna view this and we know we need to take away red to make it go that bit more blue hopefully you can see the effect that that's having that's more that's less and I think around about there looks like a nice adjustment I'm happy with that go ahead and apply get rid of this mask a moment and make another assessment so uh, this background kind of dirty red color uh, I'd sooner have it pop a little bit more red if I can so red mask and create it and that's just about finished now I'm going to take you through the mask blur again this time I know it's going to need quite a large blur so maybe even 55 I'll just give that a try okay straight away I'm happy with that apply it to the image get that preview going and let's take a look at adjusting it so removing some red uh, makes it actually go kind of a nice golden color but if I add a little bit of red and maybe take away a little blue it's going in a burnt orange now maybe take away a little bit of green and it's certainly looking a lot redder than it was before now so I'm gonna go with that it's quite a cool adjustment but uh, straight away, again, I think we've got an immediate improvement to an image that was already rather nice, I like to think. And uh, it took moments, literally moments. All right, so uh, I think finally we're going to take a little look at these last two images here. So I've got the Flaming Star and the Tadpole. Um, again, I like this image, but I think I could do maybe removing a little bit of that red in this case. Make it go a little bit of a uh, sandy golden color. So I'll just make a quick red mask as that's the region I want to work on and leave the rest of the image alone. I'm going to make quite a big blur on this one. Maybe a 55 again. Try that. And perhaps one more. Okay, I'm satisfied with 
that. I'll just drag and drop it over here. And we're going to work with curves on the red. Increase the uh, green a touch and drop the red a little bit. And you can see straight away we're getting that effect that we were looking for. So I'll just apply it. Of course, all of this is total personal taste, and I might be ruining the images for your taste, uh, but it's just for the sake of this demonstration and uh, showing you just how these tools work and how easy it is to single out colors that you want to work on. So uh, finally, I think we'll work on this recent Pleiades image, which is again uh, one I don't think I've shown yet on the uh, on the channel. But let's say this background dust here, it's kind of a I want to say a yellowish color so I think on this one we're gonna make a yellow mask and see if it picks it up so it's just taking a moment now to uh, create this mask and indeed it has identified the regions that I wanted I think yeah it looks great uh, it does need a blur so uh, maybe not too strong of a blur so I'll just apply this regular a couple of times now, if you wanted to, you could open the painting tool and you see where it's kind of picked up this yellowish star here. Um, you could just paint that out using some of this black, you know, the clone stamping uh, tool in Pixie Sight. I'm just going to leave it alone for the sake of this and show you again with curves. So I wanted to bring up them uh, yellow colors. So I'm going to add a little bit of red, add a little bit of green. And as you can see, it's made that background dust just kind of leap out at you a little bit more from uh, from what it was previously so I'm satisfied with that I think next we can reassess the image a moment and uh, just take a look at this blue car it looks a little bit maybe uh, wishy-washy so I think we're gonna make a nice blue mask just drag and drop Now uh, this is a really craggy mask and indeed it's left the centers of the stars alone because I think they're blown out to white so it's not recognizing them as having blue color data which is absolutely fine. I'm going to make this mask extremely blurred anyway which will uh, bring some of that color back into it I hope. So 55 on this. Okay that's a nice blur maybe again and just for the sake of it I'm going to make it extra blurred third time's the charm now uh, let's start working on this now so curves blue you see if I raise that blue we're getting kind of a purple hue that's fine just drag down some of the red and we've got this nice bright uh, blue color in the middle of the image now obviously I've taken this too far just for the sake of demonstration but hopefully you can see just how easy this is now uh, making changes in your images is literally it's just practically a joke at this point. It's, it's so easy to pick out those colors you want to work on and get the effects that you're looking for with no added noise. So uh, I hope this has been a reasonable overview for you of this and I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Well, I think I'd just like to finish this video now by saying obviously a huge thank you to everybody for watching and a very special thank you indeed goes out to Bill for making these tools available to us all. Uh, I for one certainly do really appreciate it and they're a firm favourite in my process in these days now so uh, I'm happy to be able to share them with you all and hopefully you're going to get just as much use out of all these as I have. So hopefully that's been a decent demonstration for you and you get a good idea of how you can implement them in your own images and I think that's about it. So until next time, clear skies.